Can ChatGPT01 create entire automations within Make with just a prompt? So in this video, I wanna show you what I just discovered with GPT-01 in terms of creating the code that can create these incredible automations. They can essentially do anything. And we're gonna compare it to the AI chat functionality that sits within Make. Now, this video is a little bit different. I'm gonna riff and we're gonna discover how good this is together. Now, I the reason I'm doing this video is because last month in my school community competition, someone had this cool idea about what if we could just say to, because when you export a file in Make, okay, I'll show you as a for instance, when you export a file in Make, it exports as a JSON file. So in theory, if ChatGPT could understand that JSON properly and the code and what it all meant, it could actually create any file that you want for us, which in other words, then becomes a conversation with ChatGPT. ChatGPT then spins up any automation, any improvements we want. That's the direction travel for Make and the future of creating these no-code automations. Now. Someone had the idea of, could we get ChatGPT to code that? And I said, what a, an amazing idea that is. Now, before this, like literally 15 minutes before this video, I gave it this automation. Now this automation is insane. It may already be on the channel. If not, it will be the next video coming up on this channel, which is a competitive intelligence automation, where essentially we take a snapshot of your competitors' websites. We monitor it for changes. We do things like check out reviews for your competitors. Lots of stuff we can do about social analysis. You'll love the video. It's a really, really cool video. But what I wanted to do, is give GPT, the GPT-01 specifically, the code for this automation. And I said, hey, can you add in another module after chat GPT that will actually, I don't know, sanitize the results of the previous module or improve the quality of it? I wanna show you what it gave me. The first one it gave me wouldn't upload. I came back and I basically said, hey, it didn't work. You know, make sure it fits within the same style lines, don't get too creative. And then it gave me this one, I'll show you what this one did. So check this out, I upload it. And just like that, guys, it created a brand new module that then sits between the ChatGPT and the Airtable. And the coolest thing about this, and the reason why I wanted to jump and yap on this video for 10 minutes with you to explore this together, is the fact that it also added in, check this out, when it loads, prompt to the ChatGPT modules. Now that tells us that it's possible. Now it's just a question of how far can we physically push it? And in this video, I also want to compare it to the AI feature in the bottom right hand corner and what that does. Now, when I asked the AI feature to do the same thing, this is what it gave me. It added a trust pilot module in it and it added this SE ranking thing. And they do call out that it's in beta, so we must give them like a fair shake. But my first impressions were that GPT-01 uh, was just better. So the first thing we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna test together, can it actually create a really cool simple automation and how does it compare? And then we'll see if it can improve and do something really epic. So the first thing I'm gonna do guys is give it the code for this automation. And I'm basically gonna say, hey, can you improve the prompt for enhanced competitive intelligence and enhanced trust pilot analysis for us? And we could build an AI code pilot that does this, but I just wanna check how good that is. Now, when you're using this code, you wanna open up in text editor if you're using Mac and make sure it's in plain text, so you can use that properly. So I'm gonna say, hey, the below is JSON code for Mac.com. I would like you to improve the prompts of the secondary GPT modules uh, in both uh, branches of the automation. Um, don't change the code and paste the full JSON. And now I'm gonna enter the JSON like so, hit enter, and then we'll see what ChatGPT does from an improvement perspective. And at the same time, let's also ask the inbuilt AI within Make what it thinks. So I can say, hey, improve, in fact, let me go back specifically and give it um, the same prompt. So I'll come back over and I'll say this. Hey, I would like you to improve the prompt of the second GPT modules in both branches of this automation. Don't change the code, paste the full JSON. And we'll see what that does as we go through there. And one of the reasons I really want to talk about this as well is because the direction of travel is going for AI to start to create it. But this, the cool thing is it's all about your brain and your ideas and how you can do things. We're not there yet. We are literally at the cusp exploring this, okay? Now look, it's identified the current prompt. Improve prompt, analyze extracted text for key insights and summarize the main points, focus on, I can't provide the full JSON, but I can hear, okay, I'd say, you know, it's not really improved the prompt, has it? Say so, no, improve, look at the scenario. Improve the prompts beyond that. Let's see what it comes back with and says. By the way, guys, I didn't even tell you at the beginning of this video. If you haven't drunk your coffee, you need to grab it to get into this video properly. It's like non, it's essential. It's a non-negotiable. 
Okay, awesome to describe in a scenario. And then once we've done this, we're then gonna test to see what GPT-01 has done. I think what's gonna be good with GPT-01 is its ability to look around corners. So the thing we're gonna test next is to state our intention of what we want to do, and then have that itself to say to us, look, these are the these are the things I think you should include and in what that would physically look like. And we can use that to troubleshoot if we'd want to. Okay, so it's given us a suggestion. If I just said, um, awesome, deploy it. Awesome, so has that actually physically done it? Deploy the changes. Okay, so it's preparing the blueprint. I like it. You know, it's a little hack, by the way. Like, it feels like you're wasting less time if there's at least some discrete animation going on and you can list what the agent and the chatbot's doing in the background. It, like, markedly improves the user experience. Cool. All right, now it looks like it's done. We had to ask a couple of times, uh, but it seems like it's done some cool stuff. So let's check out what that's done. Come down. And weirdly enough, guys, it's, like, completely um, wiped out all the information we had there before, right? How strange is that? We still got our competitive intelligence automation, which was from my last video, which you'll, again, I, I think you're gonna like that one. And it's just completely removed it. You know, not amazing if I'm honest, that's a little bit clunky. I think I'm probably gonna, I might be going to the Make Conference in Germany next month. So when I get up there, I will be asking questions about this AI module. If you have any questions for Make, let me know down below because some people in my community and I, we're gonna head out of there and see what's up. So my experience with that, you know, it's good for creating the initial modules, but it needs a little bit of refinement. So I'd say, not an A plus just yet with the AI feature. So let's go to ChatGPT and see what it's done for us. Now, if I don't see a lot of code, it's not done its job properly, but I do see a lot of code. All right, this is pretty cool. We'll copy that and we'll see what it had to say about it. Let's scroll back up. Thought for 27 seconds. Do you know what's really funny? It didn't even bother to give me any information. It just thought and did it. So anyone could text edit. Let's go to the GPT.json or whatever file that you've got. We'll change that and we're gonna click on file and click save. And remember guys, format, make sure that it's plain text, not rich text, okay? And then we're gonna save that. Now, let's go back over to our module just for the sake of it. We're gonna delete all of this and we'll change this one to test. Beautiful, come down to more, click on import blueprint. All right, I've selected the GPT JSON. Now's the moment of truth. Let's see how GPT-01 did. I click save. Now it's hurdled them together, which is a funny little quirk, isn't it? Enhanced competitive intelligence, enhanced trust pilot analysis. Has it changed the prompt? I click into it. Let's have a quick look. Let's see what we've got. And it has. Look at this. Please review the following JSON output and ensure it adheres to the specified format and guidelines. Make any necessary corrections to ensure proper JSON syntax. And guys, it's also nailed down. The, it's actually also nailed down what the specific object is. I'm really impressed with that. I'm really impressed with that. Has it done the same thing here? Because when we use AI Assistant, we didn't quite get that actually, right? Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, cool. So now we can actually, what we can do as a step if we wish is to take our entire export our blueprints, put it into ChatGPT and say, hey, this isn't working or add this or add that. What I might do actually is break something in this module. Let's do that. Let me break something in it. Then I'm going to upload it all into GPT-01 and I'm going to see if it can actually identify why it's not working. So what would be something that we could break? All right, let's say for example, I get rid of that, okay? And I put okay. So I've basically, I've like sabotaged my automation. I've gotten rid of the text out of HTML to text. Let's see if it knows that. And then let's also do one other thing, like change the max tokens to one, yeah? On those two things. And then I'm gonna basically export this as Test GPT-01. Okay, I've opened it up. I'm gonna copy this. Now let's get back over to ChatGPT. I'm gonna say, hey, I have a new scenario. The scenario is not working. I am only getting a character from GPT and the text isn't downloading in the first branch. Please diagnose it. We say our please and thank yous to AI because we want them to take care of us when the uh, apocalypse comes. Please diagnose the issue and um, create the correct JSON in full. And then we enter it in and then we go. Now, my theory with this is that it's gonna do an amazing job of editing JSONs that you give it because it has the structure and it understands the parameters. I don't know how good it's going to be at creating things purely from scratch yet because there's so many interdependencies with your air tables and things. Although to be fair, I think with the right prompting and ideas, there's probably something spectacular that we could build with this. But I wanted to bring you in into like, 
you know, my thought process was hang out together. We, you know, we grab this coffee and we just see some of the cool stuff that this can do because I think there's a lot of potential in using GPT-01 to create these blueprints from scratch, but at least for sure at the moment, we can use it as a troubleshooter. So let's see if we, well, we'll find out if we can use it as a troubleshooter as it built up all the beautiful code. Now, the other thing to bear in mind, obviously GPT-01 preview has got a bit of a limit. We can't go crazy. We can't get off the rails with it. So we have to make sure that we're using it responsibly, uh, but we could test as a GPT-01 mini. Uh, I'm not sure you'd get these kind of results of GPT-40. Uh, I mean, O1 one preview is just an absolute beast. So we'll see exactly what this comes out like. All right, guys, it is officially done. So let's copy the code. I love it. GPT-01 is like, no yapping. I'm like, explain it to me. It's like, no, I'm not explaining it to you. You can just do it yourself. Okay, test GPT-01, we enter it in, and let's click on, oh, hold on a sec, it's added some row code, let's get rid of that at the bottom. Hang on a moment, get rid of this, come right up to the top. Beautiful, okay, click file, click save, come back over, come back over now, let us delete this entire thing, and let's upload the code, more import blueprint. Okay, so I've selected the test GPT JSON, let's upload that and see what it does. Blueprint was important, don't get set up the scheduling. Okay, let's see if it's fixed it. Has it changed the max number of tokens? It has, it's created a thousand X. How ridiculous is that? And the other question is, has it added some data in here? It did, it actually did. That is insane that it did that. I actually, I'm really impressed that it understood the context that we needed the website. I mean, that's, that's really impressive, guys. That's really impressive that it's kind of like So like, if you now get stuck on a scenario and you're like, dude, I can't get it. Obviously, if in the community, which I'll just pull up very quickly so you can check this out, we have like so much cool stuff. You can ask anybody. Like one of the things we pride ourselves on is that like you get a response super quick. We've got five or six tech support calls every single week. We've got onboarding 51 minutes. You get questions. But what this also now means is that you could actually just upload it to GPT-1 and be like, hey, bro, like why is this not working? find out why it's not working and it will troubleshoot. I'm super impressed with that. Now, the last thing I wanna test it with is gonna be the ability to create a brand new scenario. So what if I said something like, hey, I would like to create a scenario that gets a trigger from Slack, uh, then um, pulls Airtable and adds and analyzes the um, user output to improve the text to a fifth grade reading level and then uh, sends it to Gmail. Improvise. Okay, cool. We'll see what this looks like because I've not given it any information on Slack yet. Is that like the worst prompt ever? You know, it might be. It might be up there for top 10 worst prompts I've ever seen, especially for decapitalization of I and that sort of stuff. But I'm just giving it something crazy to throw out there. My theory is that it won't do as well with things it hasn't seen, but you can imagine like if you can build up and train it and give it all the modules that you need um, and use this as something to help you complete it once you've already developed it, I think that's gonna be very interesting. And then the final thing, I said final before, but I like, this is one other thing I wanna test after this, which is basically like, how will it do at, just quite simply creating something. So this is a really short one. So this should be really straightforward. So we'll copy that. We'll come back over. Let's go to GPT test. Let's just replace that. Click file, click save. I'm using text edit, I think it's called. Yeah, text edit, which is awesome. Come back over to competitive intelligence. Let's delete this. I mean, this guys, this is really, really good stuff. I've selected it. Let's click save. Okay, so it's not found the modules, which is fair enough, but it's done the air table and it's done the GPT. So my theory was kind of correct that it kind of knows like ish what to do, but it doesn't know, there's probably like a couple of letters wrong somewhere, right? So if I go chat GPT, I still need to pick an account. I've got my 500 connections there. Please simplify the following text for fifth grade reading level. And it's got text out there. If I come to Airtable, I choose an account. I just choose a random one, for instance, give that a second to load up, pick a random base, and let's see if anything pops up. Probably not. So that's not done amazingly well. So that tells me that it will do some stuff, but actually like you really, it's better if you can give it things and then it'll do that for you afterwards. Um, yeah, very impressive with that. So finally, let's just ask it one more question and let's give it a stated intention, which is always recommend doing if you're prompting correctly, is to tell it the outcome you want, just in life in general. Like that's always the, a great communication hack is, this is the outcome I'm looking for. I'm agnostic about the journey there. So if we gave it like a, let's just say I would like to, 
create a text to video automation uh, using make.com. Um, the inputs would be, in fact, how about just this? Like, how would you create that? Pick one strategy that would help me create high quality videos on scale using text. Uh, list all of the modules and an instruction to build them. And let's see how GBT-01 does about engineering and thinking like about what modules could do what. Now, here's the thing. A lot of what we do on this channel, the school community is take the modules, but we apply them in new and novel ways when we stack them together, kind of like Lego bricks. So one of the limitations I foresee here is the fact that GPT-01 might not fully understand the potential use cases we could get by leveraging them in certain ways, or like, you know, the HTTP requests or using things in different ways. But if we can give it that information in this prompt, I'm pretty sure we could get it to do some pretty interesting things and actually do the magic intelligent bit, which is finding the interesting scenario. So let's have a look at what it's got in here and what it's suggested. Okay, so it's not really given us any specifics, to be fair. Let's have a look. API call to text to video service. So it's been generic because it doesn't know, which I think is fair enough, but it's given you an example of the type of thing that you could do. So guys, I hope you find this video interesting. It's a slightly different format. I wanted to kind of workshop that with you and just show you some of the cool technologies. But in any case, guys, keep an eye open for the next video. If you haven't seen my latest video, check that out right now. But in any case, have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.